Hello, welcome to Dundro's Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. Today, I'm reviewing the classic anime series Space Pirate Captain Harlock, which was based off a manga by legendary mangaka Leji Matsumoto, right? And uh, this series aired from 1978 through 1979. It had 44 episodes, sorry, 42 episodes. And directed by Rintaro. And features the voice talents of Makio Inoue as Captain Harlock. Akira Kamiya as uh, Tadashi Daiba. And Shiyoko Kawashima as both Kei and Mayu. Right? So, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm one of those people that... If, if a space opera series did not have uh, giant robots in them, I, w- I wouldn't watch it. But in my later years, <laughs> uh, uh, in my later years, uh, I've started to expand my taste, right? With, you know, shows like uh, Le- uh, Legend of Galactic Heroes and Space star blazers right so i decided to check out the original captain harlock series and boy and was i blown away at the show yes it's like late 70s animation which 70s anime (laughs) animation is not the greatest it's very it's very uh stilted at times, right? But I was blown away by the storytelling, right? Which the show takes place in the year 2970. Well, it starts off in 2977. I think by the end of the show, it's uh, 20. It's 2979, and the show t- takes place like uh, took place like uh, takes place like. A hundred years, basically in the future. At least that's what that's when like the show was, you know, uh, you know the show was really originally made, you know, in the seventies. And the the show was about how in the future, humanity <laughs> has gone astray. Yes, we've colonized colonized planets, but we we let only machines behind to. Uh, to mine resources and send them to Earth, right? And humanity has gone stagnant, and uh, has gone stagnant, right? And uh, it went too decadent for its own good, right? And where people, all they care about is entertainment, including the politicians. They even said, like in the show, that like the politicians uh, brainwash pe- people with like propaganda in the in the cartoons and like. Uh, entertainment, right? To make people lazy, right? And even the stupid politicians fell prey to that. Uh, and in this future, right, our main protagonist is space pirate Captain Harlock, who has a space battleship called the Arcadia. Even though, in the sh- in there, if you want, when you watch the show, they're clearly calling it the Arc the Arcade. Arcade Diago or something like that, but it's supposed to be Arcadia, right? And with, with his space uh, battleship, he he robs the robs the uh, the uh, the self defense force ba- uh, battle fleets of their uh, of their. Uh, resources and shit uh, to teach them a lesson, right? Because, like, you know, and men have gone too soft in the future, right? While all this is going on, it's revealed that aliens are on Earth and they're undermining our planet, weakening it, and killing, assassinating scientists, which one of the scientists they assassinate is Professor Daiba, who leaves behind his uh, son Tadashi Daiba, uh, who is, whose father 
as father discovered the Mazon, which is this race of beautiful alien women that are fucking plant people who actually like are at, are actually ancient aliens that like ancient aliens that created civilizations on earth but left and uh, not, are now coming back so they're trying to undermine humanity right and there, there's a and Captain Harlock knows of this plan uh, finds out about this and tries to warn the, the self-defense force right the and the people of the planet to come to arms to d help defend the planet right but nobody believes him right nobody believes him and are try, try to kill him and to the point where like he tried where they even try to like take hostage his adoptive daughter Mayu who's like a little girl who is the daughter of his best friend who died who 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 created the space battleship the space battleship uh, Ar Arcadia right so what happens is Tada Tadashi Daiba who has a burning vengeance uh, burning first for vengeance against the Mazon joins his crew and they go off into space to f to fight the massive sp space caravan of Queen Lefrasia, who is the queen of the Mazon, right? Who, while on her way to Earth, has conquered conquered s countless planets and taken their population populations hostage on on their ships and use them as shields and and the um and the fleet battles that they have against the Arcadia, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just gonna go with my likes and dislikes. One, I love the characters from every, I love the characters like you have like you have like really cool cast of characters on the Arcadia. You have the first mate Yadaran who is a plastic model model otaku <laughs> Who is also a genius? You have Kay, who's beautiful blonde woman, um, who, is, um, whose father was a scientist, who tr who tried to make his uh, dreams of space colonization possible, even though space colonization already exists in this universe. That's one of the problems of the show, right? Um, you have Mime, which is a fucking female alien gray that captain harlock found during his uh, adventures through space right uh who, who was the last member of her dying race who joined the Ar who joined the arcadia when like captain harlock rescued her from her planet that was con which was taken over by killer plants <laughs> just like in that <clears throat> uh 1950s or was it 1960s sci-fi film Day of the Trifids? Which <laughs> God look that shit up, All right? You have uh, Doctor Zero and uh, and uh, me, which Doctor Zero is an alcoholic doctor on on the ship, and me is his pet cat, right? And you have the Chief et Engineer, right, who joined the space battleship uh, Arcadia. Space Pirate Battleship Arcadia, when his uh, when it turns out that his wife wife was a Mazone infiltrator, and his his half his half alien daughter got kidnapped by the Mazone, so he joined up the space the space pirate ship to go after her. Right. You also have the Mazu, who is the old maid old maid. Uh, uh, chef on the uh, ship, right? And you have other countless uh, cast of characters. What what I really liked about the show that it's kind of like it's a space opera, but there are some episodes where it's just fun uh, space adventure, and you have like other stories where it's like um, other stories where it's uh, where you have like origin stories where. Uh, you find out our tragic backgrounds of our characters, right? And of our characters, and there's also really cool sp space battle, 
uh, space, <laughs> space battles, right, in the show. That actually involves strategy. And there are episodes where it has, like, a Star Trek feel to it, where they're, they encounter weird space p phenomenon, right? Uh, yeah, so, uh, my problems with the show are there's a uh, really bad continuity <laughs> where uh, we'll get introduced to like an alien race right like the talk the tokakins for example right which look like human sorry which look like they're like humans but uh with like small heads right and pointed ears right and then we'll get intro well see um they, they showed them again and they just look like normal humans, right? And then there's the fact that we it was implied that the Mazone were a race of female-only plant women, right? And then later on, at some episodes, we, we, all, we also see males. Though there are no male, uh, males and kids, right? Even though there's no males and they're like... There's no male Mazone soldiers, right? So it's like that was weird. How like in one episode we get we introduced to Mazone male Mazone males, and then like they're they're never referenced again. Uh, there's a problem where our characters, like crew members, don't really die during the show, right? Uh, until like the very end where like it's like episode 39 where the Arcadia gets boarded by Mazone, Mazone, uh, uh, Mazone craft and they have like a shootout on the ship and you see like a bunch of ki a bunch of crew members right some of them some of them we've seen uh, we've seen in previous episodes, but like they're never they're never given names, right? We see those characters die, like the nerdy like the nerdy guy with the glasses, right? And then he's like, uh, then you see him again alive in the next episode when you you clearly saw him get uh, killed, right? <laughs> so it's like there's weird continuity issues. Um, like that and like another problem I had with the show is that um, Captain Harlock would was very uh, passive when it came to like when it came to strategies I guess well uh, he kept how do I say this he kept falling for enemy tricks and acting like he knew it was a trick all along but fell for it anyway so it's like and then there's the fact that, like, um, spoiler alert, he lets, that he has a fucking final duel with the Mazone Queen, right? Who has, has throughout the series has done, um, dirty tactics using civilian ships as shield, uh, as, sh sh uh, shields, right? Even killing, hu like, civilians, uh, civilian caravan ships who wanted to leave the caravan to uh to uh start over on a new, on a new planet right and had had them all killed but then like like he just he he has a fight with her re finds out she, <clears throat> she unlike with the other mazone she has red blood like humans where they have green blood Right, so he just lets her go, right? <laughs> uh, so, like, the, the, the last episode is our characters going to Earth and being treated like shit by the fucking Earth government, right? And only for the, uh, only for the Mazone, the Mazone Earth Occupation Force to rise up and attack the planet, right? Which... It, it, and here's a, my, another problem I had. They, how they handle that is they destroy the they destroy the pendant, which was this giant uh, black uh, globe that like crashed onto the Earth that sent a message to humanity: Hey, the the Mazone are coming, right? Uh, 
Which when they when that first when the when the huge giant pendant thing first attack uh, first came to Earth, they tried to destroy it before it it, it crashed into the city, right? Uh, and their their pulsar cannons didn't do nothing, right? But now Sunny, when it came to the climax of the show, uh, it destroyed it. I think that was probably the ending for this for this uh, anime was probably filler because I checked the manga was still ongoing at the time, right? The the manga was like going on at at the same time as the anime, so it's probably there was a, probably a different ending. And then there's uh, other shit where like you see characters survive explosions that they probably wouldn't survive. <laughs> like like early on, uh, like Mayu was in the city when the giant pendant thing fell the fell to, uh, fell f from the uh, you know from space onto. The onto uh, the earth, right? And she was in the city that got, uh, got hit and she somehow survived. <laughs> and uh, there's also uh, one of the... One, th one thing also, like there's a... Before before Queen Lephrasia, the main villain of the show was the... Uh, was the commander of the SDF, right? The uh, Earth Federation Forces, whatever. Right, called uh, Commander Kirita, who is, who's basically they have that old trope where a guy, a character who was a villain becomes a hero, right? Uh, and C Commander Kirita becomes a, like a good guy at near the end of the show. But like, yeah, there there were times where they were fighting him that he saw, like he survived, right? <laughs> Fucking explosions and shit, right? And he even did like undermining tactics where he kidnapped Mayu to get like you know to get at Captain Harlock, right? And even had her gang bullied at her orphanage, right? At the school, uh, like at orphanage uh, that she lived at, right? And and the school, right? To get at Captain Harlock. So besides from all that stuff, I really enjoyed the show. Um, the animation is not the greatest, but if you keep like it's the thing where like you watch it enough and you get used to it, right? Um, and then there's also the fact you know this was the best they had at the time, right? But overall, I enjoyed the show. The show is actually it, it's pretty ahead of its time, right? But then again, maybe uh, with the social commentary, they they were dealing with the same shit in the '70s as they are. Uh, as we are now, so that could be right. Why the the sh the social commentary in the anime feels like so like ahead of its time, but I don't know, man. Um, but yeah, like I re I really enjoyed this show, and there's a reason why this show is a classic. And to the fucking per person who put up a review saying like Captain Harlock is an anime for losers and outcasts, is like fuck you, man. This anime is awesome, <laughs> right? Uh, it has its problems, but if you stick with it, it's great, man. And if you if you're one of those people like, man, I can't handle the fucking uh, outdated animation. Um, they did. There are like, uh, move. I think they did made sequel OVAs, right? Uh, in from the 90s and 2000s, so you can just watch that instead. And like, those are way shorter than this, right? But overall, I enjoyed this show. And Spy's Proms, you know, it's a classic for a reason, giving it 7 out of 10. That's it for this review, guys. Peace. Uh, I'm going to, my next anime review is going to be Tetujin, Tetujin 28, the 2004 series. But uh, I'm going to alternate between anime reviews and tokusatsu reviews. So I'm going to first, I'm going to finish watching Kamen Rider Zero One and when that's reviews done then I'll start wa start working on my Tetrigen 28 review. Alright guys that's it for this review. P peace and also if somehow you got to the end of this po uh, this podcast uh, and you haven't voted yet on the recent game review poll on my community tab channel <coughs> sorry please go 
uh, vote because we have a tie right now. <laughs> Sorry, it burps. 